Right, well we're very pleased to have with us in the Faculty of Modern Languages at the University of Cambridge, Dr Tom Harrington from Trinity College Hartford in Connecticut. One of the delights of being in academia is meeting colleagues who share the same interest and passion and this is certainly the case with Tom. Uh, Tom has been particularly interested over the past few years on one aspect of uh, Valencian life which is that of emigration and the presence of Valencians particularly in the Americas. So Tom, I was wondering if you'd like to start perhaps with your experience of uh, pursuing this subject in the United States because I think you were present at the filming of a documentary about the Valencian presence in New York, is that right? That's correct. Uh, it, actually I came to the Valencian world a little bit later than most of the other things I've been interested in the peninsula and I can't ex quite explain why that is. It took me a while to get to Valencia but once I did I became very interested in things. I had looked at Valencian immigration in the Americas mostly through the prism of Catalan immigration to the Americas and you would see in certain cities such as Buenos Aires or Montevideo that there would be an uneasy coexistence sometimes between Valencians and Catalans in their various social houses. And there would be some Valencians that would throw in their lot with the Catalans and others that would not. And then there would be other cases where a Valencian house would be completely autonomous. But it was really through uh, uh, a friendship with a, a filmmaker named Julia Steve who's a, uh, a, a re former reporter for TV3 in Barcelona, but is a Valencian Valencian, that I got very interested in the, in the question of Valencians in the United States. We began talking one day and he said he was going to be doing a film about Valencians in, he calls, I think the film talks about Valencians in Manhattan, but it's really a, a misnomer in the film's title because Valencian in the United States really have some presence in Manhattan and in, in New York, but really it's a much more widespread phenomenon and, and one of the centers of Valencian immigration in the United States is my home state of Connecticut. Uh, especially the, my home city of Hartford and the nearby city of New Britain, which were very important parts of uh, industrial America. The industrial America that we really don't have any longer, but as recently as 50 years ago, these were very powerful uh, industrial cities. The arms industry, for example, is based or was based in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, the Colt Company. And many Valencians came to the United States, worked at the Colt fam uh, factory, uh, and from the Colt factory they would move out to other forges and other places. The fields were Els camps estaven als afores de Hartford. Ells treballaven durant la primavera i l'estiu en el tabac, als camps, i a l'hivern anaven a les fàbriques de tabac o d'altra classe o a la construcció. Per a la regió de Hartford va ser una via molt important d'accés a l'economia i al benestar. Treballaven en el tabac primer, aconseguien un lloc de treball no qualificat en una fàbrica. Els seus fills després tenien un treball qualificat en la fàbrica. Els nets ja podien arribar a treballs de coi blanc en les companyies d'assegurances i els bancs i més tard arribaven a ser metges i advocats. Una sèrie completa de graons en l'escala social i va ser el tabac qui ho va fer possible, aquell treball terrible, dur, brut, desagradable, que no estava ben pagat però no havies de saber anglès. Per això, els valencians van voler canviar la via de tren i el camp de tabac per les indústries, especialment a Connecticut, l'estat més valencià de Nord-Amèrica. New Britain, la mateixa capital Hartford, Bridgeport, Shelton, Derby, Ansonia o Waterbury són ciutats on l'any 20 vivien i treballaven més de 6.000 valencians. En tota classe de treballs industrials, des de les fàbriques d'acer i de coure a les manufactures metàl·liques, del tèxtil de Shelton a la discogràfica Columbia, passant per les fàbriques d'armes com la Colt a Hartford o la Remington a Bridgeport, abans potent i ara en ruïnes. Però crec que el que realment m'ha sorprès en el curs del filming, que no estava present en tot, però I showed up at some of the places where filming was going on was the poverty 
uh, that a lot of Valencians, at least the ones that came to the United States, were fleeing from. Mm. And this, of course, is the, the time we're talking about is, the, is America as the great melting pot um, and destination of European immigration. Was the Valencian diaspora in, in this area uh, as pronounced, say, as, we, as identifiable as Valencian as the Italian immigration and, the, and, uh, and other fo uh, Polish immigration as well? Absolutely not. I mean, it's, uh, in terms of finding this story, uh, which Julia Steff has done with great care, he's a journalist by training, but he's gone at this with the, the, the care of a real archivist. Um, he did a lot of tracing because the sense of identity of the Valencians, it's kind of an odd thing, and I think we've talked about it at one time or another. They knew very well they were Valencians, it's just what they were. But in terms of having a political identity that they could attach to what they profoundly were and are, uh, the issue is, is much less clear. And so insofar as they identified in this part of the world as anything, it was as Spaniards. Uh, New Britain has the Spanish, I think it's called the Spanish Club Español. But really, if you look through the list of who was in the Club Español, which I had the luck of going to a, about 15 years ago, I think it's closed its doors now. It was an ethnic club that uh, was almost exclusively Valencian. So there's that sort of disconnect between the very strong cultural feeling of being Valencian, of speaking Valencian, and, and feeling very rooted to the rituals of Valencia, but that the political expression was much less clear in that sense. And so, hence, the, the profile of the Valencians as uh, an ethnic group was much less clear in the American melting pot. Interestingly enough, a lot of them it would seem, in the ones we came across through the film, were often paired with Italians as the generations went on. There seems to have been a lot of inter-Mediterranean uh, pairing. So a lot of uh, Valencian immigrants or their children married Italian immigrants and their children and, and in a certain sense began to create a, a, a new melting of those two Mediterranean cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, you've touched on a point which has fascinated me for, for years now and this is the, the difference between being a Valencian in terms of speech, communication, mentality and social life and actually being historically or def, uh, defined or politically defined as, as that community. Um, I'm not surprised that therefore that there's that same type of lack of definition uh, in, the, in the American diaspora. But you touched on, on the poverty of these uh, immigrants. Would you say that the, the poverty was more pronounced than other immigrant communities or are we looking at more or less the same experience across the board? We, I remember interviews coming up in which they would talk about what it would be for una jornada in the United States and what that jornada in the United States would be would be would take them to do in Valencia and the, 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 the multiplications were extraordinary. You could earn in maybe a month in the United States what you would take a year to earn in Valencia. Probablement, la notícia que a l'Amèrica es guanyaven bons jornals corria de boca en boca entre els jornalers de la pansa i de la ras, faenes que ajuntaven homes de la marina i de molts altres llocs. Fins al 1920 hem pogut contar 15.500 entrades de valencians als parcs dels Estats Units i el Canadà. Pego, Pedreguer, Arba i Dènia són els quatre pobles amb més de 500 emigrants a Nord-Amèrica, d'entre 275 pobles valencians afectats pel fenomen. Se'n va buscar-se pues, una vida millor de la que tenien, que era una vida ruïn. No volia dependre de senyorets, perquè a senyorets sempre hi havia que llepar-los, com aquell que diu. No podien suportar el tindre que estar sempre pegant la cabota. A la dona, a m'abuela, li dia, Rosa, em diuen per ahir que hem posat a la xiqueta en amo i no era veritat. No volia que li ho digueren les persones i sí. no ho volien. I m'abuelo li va dir a m'abuela, saps què, agarrem totes les xiquetes i m'ho anem a Amèrica. El que volia era comprar-se algun bancalet. 
Me voy a patrocinio, se van a ir allá a Estados Unidos porque no le apañaba molt la faena que hacía así en España, que era anar al bancal y las faenas de casa. Mi padre tampoco le, le agrada uh, mucho de la, tra, trabajar la tierra. Tenía en casa hipoteca y no podían pagar las deudas que te en la farmacia. Va a arreglar una finqueta, pero veo que tenía dinero, ¿sabes? Y se van a ir allá ahora si se desempeñaba. Vivían bien, pero había sentido que, que las carreteras de, de los Estados Unidos estaban por de hora y, y un de los germanos de, de, de mi padre va a venir a ver si era verdad. So there was very much this idea of go, make some money and come back, which is one of the things when we talk about emigration, we tend to, I think there's certain mythologies, especially in the United States, is that People come there and they wanted the freedom and of course they were going to stay. But most people, from my, what I've been able to see, aren't thinking that way. They're saying, one jornada here and one, uh, one year here, or one month here and one year here. And they're thinking in very concrete terms about what that means and the factory life and the big immigra immigration, immigration excuse me, to the United States was There's a couple of phases, There's, but as it is with most European countries, it was before the First World War. And then the gates were closed uh, to the United States. And these people were simply looking for a way out of a bad economic situation and also a bad socioeconomic situation in the sense that the, the latifundismo or the, 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 the large landowners, the sense of the, the, the landowner who really controlled your life or to whom your life was, was, was dedicated simply because he was the only person that could give you any hope of, of earning money. Mm. And that's what these people were, were fleeing from. If, and if memory serves, a lot of them were coming from the marina area uh, of Valencia. That's right. It's, it's curious this because um, in the experience of, of Irish emigration, the, there tends to be a mentality of remembering home but not so much the determination to return whereas the documentary you're referring to uh, this point is absolutely crucial that they consider themselves as Valencians they to a mass capital and somehow to get back and one of the interesting things was the way that it followed these uh, immigrants and their return to, to mm. Valencia um, could you speak a bit more about that? Yeah, that I was mentality? struck by uh, that and the way America seems in many ways to have not changed many of them. That this sort of instrumentalist look at America that said, okay, I go there, I get my money, and then I come back here and I live like a happier Valencian with less worry about financial things. And it really, it, for, for me, who, I'm a person who's not nearly as familiar with Valencian culture as you are, that really struck me a lot. This, this deep, deep um, dedication to just being the way we are. And that we'd seen it all, we'd been in the big cities, we'd, we'd seen, uh, we'd lived weather that was 30 below zero, um, some of us have gone off to fight for the United States in, in, in wars, but all we want to get back to is this piece of land where we can be among our people doing our things. This is quite incredible really, isn't it, considering that New York at this time, as today, was really the, the major cosmopolitan experience in the world, and yet they seem to be relatively untouched by, yeah. by this. Yeah, it's... Uh, I think you sometimes see it, uh, we, in, I've actually spent more time probably looking at Portuguese immigration simply because I've lived among it. But uh, many things are in common with Portuguese immigration, which, by the way, in, in, in the United States, the, the places where Portuguese immigration went overlap in many cases with where Valencia was. For example, in Hartford we have a very large Portuguese community. Uh, we also, in Providence, Rhode Island, Greater Boston, and the seacoast areas. And Portuguese emigration is very similar in that sense. Coming here to get the dollars and going back to, to live a better life and I'm going to have what they say in Port my quinta, my little piece of land, and I'm going to live uh, like a happy man ever after. 
Yeah, uh, perhaps that's a nice moment to, to reflect on the wider experience now, away from uh, a New England and New York in particular. You mentioned the Portuguese. Is there any other areas of the Americas where the Valencians uh, made a foothold? And there has been in Puerto Rico, is my understanding, an important area, um, and that's the, that comes. But I'm thinking of the West Coast. And in the Portuguese case, you have a strange. Case you have a you have a divided Portuguese uh, emigra emigration pattern. We have New England, New York, Toronto, Canada, of all places, which tends to be a later emigration. And then, strangely enough, you have the Central Valley of California and Hawaii. Um, but I don't know as much about the mapping. I think because this project was so fixated on Ellis Island. The things coming into Ellis Island, but it would certainly for future research, it would be very interesting to look at, and perhaps looking at the ways in which Valencian communities in, say, Cuba and Puerto Rico interacted, as we know, Catalan communities did. Uh, there was there were Catalan communities that interacted with Tampa, Florida, New, uh, New York City. There's the famous journal called Humanera, which linked them together. And it would be interesting to see if there were similar patterns of Valencian communities remaining in touch and communicating with each other in, in similar patterns. Mm -hmm.